know about any of you guys watching this, but here in Missouri, we've been in the offseason for, I don't know, about three weeks now, give or take a few. This is our third coaster discussion, and Ellis, this is your first time being on the set for this. You yes, excited? It, yes, it is. Thank you for having me on. Yep. And uh, in case you guys can't tell, we're obviously rocking shirts from different Missouri parks. Like, I've got Boss from Six Flags St. Louis, he's got Prowler at Worlds of Fun, and you got Time Traveler at Silver Dollar City. So for this video, what we're gonna be doing is talking about our top 10 coasters in Missouri. Now, unlike our previous two coaster discussions we've had where he and I have talked about our top 10 of the same type of topic, we're doing what we're calling, I guess, a collective list. In other words, average. Yes, exactly. So how this worked, we uh, went over and talked about each individual person's top 10 in Missouri, and then I found an average for each of them, and the lower the average number, the higher on the list they will rank. And uh, we'll get into that more as we keep going. So uh, I guess our number 10 coaster in Missouri. Ryan, you're introducing this one. What do we got? It is American Thunder GCI 2008 originally called Evil Knievel. Then there was name change because there was a licensing issue. There was? I never knew anything about this. Um, It's a clone. There's another one in Finland. Yeah, I think I heard rumors there might have been another one being built somewhere else, although fact check me on that. Mm -hmm. like, oh yeah, yeah. there's yeah. a clone Thunderbird. called Thunderbird. Yeah. Thunderbird. <laughs> not, not to be confused with the one at Hollywood. Yeah, well, this is a different yeah, one we're talking about here. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, anyway. So this GCI starts off with the twisted drop. Pretty good. It's standard at GCI Twisted Drop. Yeah, not the best drop. Throughout the layout, you have good laterals and pretty good airtime as well. I would say the most airtime in the park, maybe not the best airtime, but it's still a solid GCI coaster. I would say it ranks as fourth in the GCI list that I have. I have it ranked, I forget if it was fourth or fifth at this park. It's one of those two spots, but I thought it's very inconsistent last few years, especially last year. Like some days it was running really good with solid airtime and good laterals throughout, and other days not so much. There is a coaster I found to be even more inconsistent than that, but we'll get to that coaster in a little bit. 2019 was peak for American Thunder. Oh, it was yeah. running so good that year. Did you ride in 2019, Ellis? I believe I did, yes. I remember one night, it was middle of October, it was flying. Ridiculous airtime on it. By far the best rides we've ever had on it, he and I. Yeah, and that's when it was my favorite coaster in the park. As for where I had it ranked in Missouri, I forgot, but I'll be putting a pinned comment so you guys can see where each of the top 10 coaches in Missouri ranked for each of us. But, mm -hmm. Ellis, actually, what do you like about American Thunder? I like how it is smooth, there's some bit of airtime in it, especially those bunny hops at the end of the ride. It doesn't jerk you really hard or anything, so. Mm -hmm. I mentioned that it was very inconsistent. That also applies to the roughness. Like, some days I've noticed that it's running rougher than others. Like, last year in particular towards the start, I didn't think it was that smooth, honestly. There were some valleys in the first half that even the front row caused a little bit of jackhammering, but. Never been unbearable. Yeah, it's definitely not. It's probably the smoothest woody in our mm, park. Debatable, but we'll get say. more into that in a little bit. Number nine. Ellis, why don't you introduce this one? What we have at number nine is Batman the Ride. It opened at Six Flags St. Louis in 1995. It's a B&M invert. Got a lot of clones in the Six Flags chain. You said five? I've been uh, on, I've been yeah, on I've five. Yeah, I've been on all, I, he's been on a five. I don't think you've been on any other ones, but. No, no, someday. I've only been on the one in Six Flags St. Louis, but there are a lot of clones. Like there was one in Great America, Great Adventure. Over Georgia is arguably Georgia. the best one, which. Uh, I think over Texas. Yep. Yeah. Yep, that's yeah. Them. There's three in Texas. Yeah, there's three of them. Which you guys saw my review for Batman the Ride, which I posted fairly recently. I highly recommend checking that one out if you haven't already to get more of my complete thoughts. Yeah, on I it. saw it. Super intense, that's for sure. Although oh, yeah. some run better than others, like over Georgia's flies to the lab. But Ours and over Georgia's are the two best, I think. I agree uh, with that. They're both really good. And every single one of them have five inversions. Yep. Yes. Ellis, you think you like the back row the better. That's Actually, I do. Right. The reason why I like the back the best is because you're always flying through those elements super fast, especially after the lift tail and even some of the inversions. I get the most intensity out of it, so. I think uh, the best seat is actually, uh, depends on how well it's running. Like if it's not running the greatest, I would argue the back is better, but I think when it's flying at its best potential, I think the front's a little bit better, but you really can't go wrong with either row. And oftentimes, whichever one I ride depends on the shorter line. Usually I see the back row with the shorter line, and if that's the case, I get on it, but if I see the front with a fairly short line, I'm going to give the front a try. It is a fairly short ride, it feels like, but I'm not really complaining about it because I think each element is powerful. The drop is really good in the back. The corkscrews, which are actually, I think, called wing overs. Those are insane. Zero Zero is always great. Helix is insane, especially in the front. It's overall a really good ride. Ryan, what do you think about Batman? There's a funny story where I had to shove socks in my shoes so Wait. I could ride it the first time. Wait, when was this? You never told me about this. This was when I was 13. Oh, dang. And it was my first coaster that I could ride that was 54 inch and above nice. height requirement, and I was pumped. And then it just like, whoa, that's yeah, that's uh, quite the ride. Yeah, I think it was either that or I don't know, is Thunderbird Hollow about 54 inches? I forget. It was one of those two. I would say our clone is one of the better inverts.
favorites that I've yeah, been on. Yeah, like I said, if you guys saw my Batman review, I ranked each of them that I've been on at the very end so you guys can get my general thoughts on it. Even though it's a clone, I feel like it doesn't deserve any of the hate that people get. I know a lot of people tend to rank it at the very bottom just because it's a clone and nothing else. I think that's unjustified hate. When I very first started going to theme parks, I always used to be a little scared of inversion roller coasters and never were able to get on them. But when I got older, I was able to handle them like Batman and Mr. Freeze, but we'll get to Mr. Freeze later, but. Yep, because you know that's I, gotta be on the list. In other words, I got over my fear of inversion, so. Batman was my first inverting coaster, which I think that was for all of us, I think. Although, I don't know. Ryan, you might have something to say about that? Rock and Roller Coaster is. Okay, that's what I thought. Okay, yeah. Rock and Roller Coaster Hollywood Studios. Did you also mm -hmm. ride Wildfire first or not? No, where Wildfire was second. Okay, because for me, I think it went Batman, St. Louis, and then Thunderbird, but obviously we're not talking but, about Thunderbird. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, when I read Rock and Roller Coaster, I did not know anything about it. So. Yeah, it's uh, indoor launch looping, but that's for another video. We're getting off topic here. Yeah. So, Batman is number nine. Number eight is the coaster that got me into being an enthusiast, and the reason why we're recording this video today, Screaming Eagle, also at Six Flags St. Louis. This coaster, when it opened back in 1976, was the tallest, fastest, and longest in the world. Over 47 years later, I think it's still running pretty solid for an uh, old school Woody. It's got some decent airtime moments, especially in the back. In the back, they're really good, like especially the drop off the turn next to the boss's lift hill. Holy cow, it's good when it's hauling. Great night ride, arguably best night ride at Six Flags St. Louis. I will say, it's definitely not the smoothest ride, and uh, Ellis, you have something to say about that. The reason why it's very low on my individual list is because when I've been writing it a lot this year, it has always like jerked me really hard in those turns and stuff, made me feel uncomfortable. They need to figure out a way in the future to make it smoother so that it doesn't shake you uncomfortably like that. Hopefully they can fix that in the future. I think part of the reason why you say it was running a lot rougher is because I think a lot of the time we wrote it, it was Red Train. All three of us are in agreement. Blue yes. Train is smoother than the Red yeah, Train. <laughs> it is. I think a lot of your rides were on Red Train, which that would explain why and uh, very back of Red Train. I don't think I've ever ridden that. I've only ridden the very back of Blue Train, but even that was rough. Screaming Eagle, I would say really good ride. Glad that one got me into being an enthusiast and recording this video. And uh, to this day, it still ranks very highly for me. But I know Ellis uh, doesn't think too fondly of it, I guess is one way to put it. Uh, but don't get me wrong. I don't hate the ride completely. Yeah, no, none of us. Otherwise, do. it wouldn't have made the cut. But or that would have been like nine or ten even. But yeah, yeah, it just needs to be smooth and a little bit. I shouldn't have to feel uncomfortable riding any rides. Brian, you never said what you like about Screaming Eagle. What do you like about it? No, I'm just kidding. My favorite parts are the drops off the mm -hmm. turnarounds. So first one is pretty good. The drop near the boss is the best one. And oh, then yeah. the one going on those final return hills into the station are really good too. This ride does in fact have a dud hill, which yeah. you and I know which one that one is. Yeah, but we know. In case you're not familiar with which hill it is, after the drop off the first turn, there's this one little speed hill that is profiled so weirdly that it doesn't give any airtime, no matter how well it's running. I've never come even close looking no. at my seat. It's the little hill for climbing into the far turnaround next to the boss's lift hill. Right. So don't expect any airtime on this hill. If you get anything, I'll be very shocked. If that's happened to you, comment below. Let us know about it. Sitting in the second of back row because it's smoother than the back row. Oh, yeah. We'll see. Number seven. Ryan, you're in Powder keg. My first ever launch coaster. Let's just say that it knocked my socks off the first time I mm -hmm. rode it. It was my favorite for quite a while until another coaster in the same park got built. I rode this with my grandpa when I was nine. You rode that young? Dang. Yeah. I think I closed my eyes the whole time. Definitely uh, not a good idea because you need to to see where you're going yeah. to not be rattled around like crazy. Wrote it a couple times later because I've been to SDC pretty frequently. I think it is going a few weeks after this being recorded, which Des I'm not going to be there for yeah, it. But. December 9th and 10th. Mm -hmm. I'll be going down there again for Christmas. Once he gets back from that trip, Ryan and I will make a two-part video where we discuss our top 50 coaches, so that'll be something to look forward to. The launch is an air compressed launch, and it's amazing. One of the punchiest launches out there. Air compressed and hydraulic are the best two launch systems, mm -hmm. I think. LSM and LIM are the I mean, some are hit or miss. Like, you got the ones like the last coaster, second launch, or the tunnel or launch on Maverick. Maverick launch, launch, which is crazy. But this one, I think it's 0 to 53 in 2.5 seconds or something like that. Something like that. But it's definitely not the best air, air compressed compress launch that I've been on because neither of these two have ran Max Force, which I have. And uh, Max Force, I think that is the third best launch I have experienced behind Top Thrill Dragster's launch, rest in peace, by the way. And also Kina Ka's Six Flags Great Adventure. Powder Keg, great launch. Solid airtime. Air time. Yes. Yeah, there's three great airtime moments of the first half. Then the drop off the lift hill is really good and that lateral turn into yep. the final helix gives strong ejector in the front row. Ellis, what do you think about powder cake? I'll let you share some of your thoughts. I like it. I mean, I have never seen or been on a coaster before this one where first you launch at the beginning and then you go on a lift hill in the middle. Yeah, of there are very few right. that do that. Like the one that I've written recently that uh, Ryan will probably be getting on next year, Fire Chaser Express at Dollywood. There's a launch out of the station that it goes oh, I've already, after the Yeah, I've, I've been on that one too. I still gotta go there. Yeah, Ryan, I hate to break to, has never been on Lightning Rod, but Mr. yeah. 
it twice. Sad. Anyway, so Ellis, what were you thinking about Powder Keg? What you liked about it? So the launch is my favorite. The speed throughout the entirety of the beginning oh, part, yeah. oh, nonstop yeah, the, the up until hall. you hit the lift hill. The section out the lift so. hill isn't anything exciting. It's way too short, I would say. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a drop and a helix into the brakes. Yeah. But there is the pop of airtime going into that helix. Yeah, at least there's not a complete dud. No, but I just wish there was more. I don't think any of us have mentioned the Buzzsaw Falls turn yet. The ladder ladder were ridiculous awesome. this year. If you saw my video of my uh, surprise and disappointments, which I recommend checking that one out as well, by the way, you may or may not have seen Powder Cake on that list. It's actually very rare that you get to ride Powder Cake multiple times in a row, because I've always seen it with a massive line. When we went to Silver Dollar City this year, it was pretty much a walk-on for almost the entire part of it. Yeah. It crazy, but it was awesome. And we used Trailblazer. Yeah, that we was did, the other but thing. even before then, I saw it was like barely a line. I did it like three times in a row, and I've never been able to do that. Normally, I've ridden it like twice in a visit. Three rides back-to-back -back in like 20 minutes. That's almost unheard of for that ride. Those night rides on there are insane. Oh, yeah, the night ride. I forgot about yeah. that. It gets dark back there. It does, which so. uh, Ellis and I got a front row night ride back in July when the moon was lighting part of the track, and yeah. that was cool. But then again, it's not even the best night ride at that park, which uh, we'll get to that probably in a little bit. Number six, first coaster at Worlds of Fun to make the list, Mamba. Ryan and I both have this as our favorite coaster in the park, but oh, yeah. Ellis has starting to say about that. We'll, we'll get to that in a little bit. When I first rode Mamba in 2022, it shocked me with how great it was. I wasn't expecting it to be anywhere near as good as it actually was, which I would say is my third favorite in Missouri, which uh, Ryan's got a Mamba Nano coaster right here. There we go. The first half was amazing. Like, strong positives on the Helix. I would say decent airtime over the first drop in the back row and then maybe some over the airtime level, but the Helix is by far the best part of the ride in the first half. And also, there's one little, I guess, kink in the ride that- Oh yeah, the kink right yeah, I don't before know the why mid course. It does that. When she goes to the mid course break run, which when I rode it a little over a month ago is when I'm recording this, the mid course wasn't hitting like- Hitting in 2022, it was hitting ever so slightly, but this year I didn't even hear the brakes kicking, so it just slid on through. The return run is just absolutely insane. The return run is what made the ride so good for me. I've said this in a few other videos, but I prefer Mom's finale over Matt. Magnum's finale, which I know is controversial, but Magnum's finale was too painful for me to enjoy, while Mambo's didn't really have the same issue. Or sustained uh, as Yeah, well. I will agree with that. Like, Mambo, I was out of my seat, like, way more than I was in my seat on the road turn around. Like, I didn't even have much of a chance to land back in my seat, so that was insane. Speed on that ride is phenomenal, and uh, I was not expecting Mambo to be the best ride at Worlds of Fun. I thought that would be another coaster that we'll get into it a little bit. You may or may not be able to figure out which one it is, and actually, it's on your screen right now. So, yeah, <laughs> we'll get to that in a second. <laughs> What do you like about Mom before we get to that? It's huge. Like, oh, they yeah. got all these huge hills that you're going over even after mm -hmm. the lift hill. Yeah. And then after those two giant hills, you make that right turn into the giant helix. It is so grandeur and big. And at the lift hill and the regular big hills, you can see all the hotels straight in front of you. Really? <laughs> I've never looked. I'll have to look for so, that next time I'm riding Mama. You get a good view of all those hotels while you're riding. So second half of it after the breaks is not too bad. Just a little pops up every time. So it's enjoyable. That's what I like about Mamba. I was going to say that those hotels, I stayed in one of those. Oh, boy. It was right across from the parking lot, and I could see Mamba from my That's hotel. pretty sick. <laughs> um, Steel Force was the first Morgan Hyper I went on, and I was oh, just like, eh, about that. pretty good, but it's not anything special. Then I rode this thing, and the first half was a lot faster. First hill after the lift hill actually gave good air time. The Helix was intense, unlike on Steel Force, and then the second half was not even close to oh, yeah. Steel Force. There was a Jack Dreher time, which I did not feel on that other poster. Seven moments of it in the second half, and that's, that's a lot. I actually rode Mamba before Steel Force, so you can kind of expect I might have been a little bit disappointed with Steel Force <laughs> because I had ridden Mamba, I think, eight times prior to it, and none of them was with the mid-course. I rode it after they deactivated the mid-course break run, so it was always flying in the return run. Steel Force, the mid-course break run was turned on on each of my three rides, and I'm like, oh man, this ride could be so much better. I know that it could be better than Mamba, potentially because the first half, I actually thought it rivaled Mamba. It was really good still. But that mid-course break run, man, it almost killed it the second half for me. It. it prevents Steel Force being higher than we'll be otherwise. But then again, Steel Force is still my top ride during the park. Mamba in this list is not our favorite coaster at World of Fun. And what is that top coaster? Ellis, why don't you get into this one? Because I know you yeah. like this one. <laughs> yeah, so this shouldn't be a surprise, but Prowler at number five. But on my list, it's number one in the park. It's a GCI wooden roller coaster that opened there in 2009. And instead of crossing itself like American Thunder does, it actually goes out in the woods. My favorite part about Prowler is it's fantastic night rides. Like it is without a doubt one of my favorite night rides of all time. And every single time I go there, that's the ride I always marathon over anything else. The night rides, all the air time, the laterals and stuff. I don't have any complaints about it. That's why it's my favorite ride there. In fact, my new shirt too. Yes, Ryan <laughs> custom made him a shirt, which uh, yeah. is pretty cool. This is actually your top coaster in Missouri. Yes, believe it, it or not. is. Yes, yeah. it is. Even over 
course, the ones that we'll get to. Literally at my number one. That's ultimately why Prowler ranks top five for this list, because uh, Brian and I have it, I think, in like six or seven, six but or you seven. having it at number one carries it into the top five yep. now. I'm just going to come out and say Prowler is better than Mystic Timbers in every way. Sorry? Yeah. Well, actually, to be fair, Ellis hasn't gotten the chance to ride it yet, but... Yeah, I'll take your word for it. Yeah, and plus he may or may not be getting to King's Island next year, possibly. I'm not still hoping guaranteed. so. But if so, we might try and make the boys at King's Island work out. Not saying it's going to happen, though. Like, nothing in this video is confirmed to happen besides his trip to Silver Dollar Sand and Complete. Yes. And also our top 50 at the end of the year. Boys at King's Island, possible, but not guaranteed. But I say it's better than Mystic Timbers because I've written Mystic Timbers, I think, 19 times between 2020 and 2023. I've never been a big fan of it because I've always been super disappointed with the lack of airtime everyone says it has. Prowler, on the other hand, gives airtime on every single hill, no matter what. My first ride this year, front row, one-click night ride, I was terrified with how high I was coming up out of my seat. I don't even know how the airtime was so good, honestly. I thought I was going to fly straight out of the train because it's just unbelievable. I got nine rides on it during my trip to Worlds of Fun's Haunt, whereas I only rode Mamba three times, and I was so amazed by how well Prowler was running. Ellis has it as his favorite in Missouri. I can totally see why, based on how good my rides were. Even better than Zambezi Zinger. Oh, yeah, Zambezi Zinger, which, uh, controversial take, that is by far the weakest wind coaster in Missouri. Yes, Timberwolf on the opposite side of the park is better. And <laughs> I think Zambezi Zinger has the worst restraints of any roller coaster. Oh, yeah, and actually, uh, Ellis, you did have that in your top 10 in Missouri, but Mamba didn't make it, but uh, I think Ryan and I we, did not have it. We so. did not like the restraints. Yeah. I mean, when I got on it, I didn't have too much of an issue with it. Yeah, we just, I didn't have that same experience. No, it could be a little better, but it wasn't bothering me as much. Yeah. No, it's just still a good ride. It just could be better. Yeah, I mean, heck, I would argue with Millennium Flyer trains, I think it could be a much better experience. Oh, yeah, it would be, I think. Yeah, because the restraints that Zambezi Zinger had, they felt like Sky Rush <laughs> for me, honestly. And they're uh, worse. Yeah, for me, I've mentioned this in my surprises and disappointments video, but I said Sky Rush had the worst restraints. It was either that or Zambezi Zinger. So, Prowler, really good airtime. Insane laterals, which are just awesome. Best laterals, I think, on a GCI, and uh, definitely the best one I've written, although Ryan prefers Thunder Head Dollywood. Yeah, do I would say Prowler kind of disappointed me my first. Mm -hmm couple rides and then oh. it got a little bit better. The only part I don't like about Prowler is that far turnaround. It feels like it loses a lot of speed back there, at least when I rode it. It roars back to the finish. And the funniest part about the ride is that last turn, it was rumbling like crazy. Mm -hmm. It was pretty funny. It made me laugh. I did notice that a little bit as well this year. I noticed it was a little bit rougher in that section, but I didn't think it was anything worth complaining about. But... And I like Prowler's bunny hops way better than American Thunder. Oh yeah, yeah Prowler better. is way stronger every time than American Thunder. So <laughs> for me, it's going to be a tough GCI to beat. I think the only one that I haven't written that I think could beat it is Gold Striker, Striker which uh, I might be on it next year. Not saying it's guaranteed, but it's very possible I'll be on Gold Striker next year. Don't ride it first thing in the morning. I don't know what I gotta do to get on uh, it. It's, it's one of my most overrated coasters yeah, because I had a bad it. experience. Yeah, but uh, well, we're getting off topic again, so I'll be, keep getting off topic in a video. Next. Number four, we have uh, Time Traveler, Silver Dollar City. The most unique coaster, I would say, to make this list. Best spinning coaster that we've already written, which there you go. Yeah, there's the sort. Explain that. Ellis, you actually wrote it for your first time this year. Yeah, like it's one of the most unique insane experiences I've had on a new coaster like you just got in your seat and you literally drop out of the station like yeah who does that it felt intense to me like that was literally my favorite part of the ride oh so. I agree to drop that. out of the station is yeah. unreal Ellis you and I rode row 8 on your first ride I was a little bit nervous with that drop like every time I ride time travel especially in row 7 or 8 the drop gets me we're all in agreement it's the best drop in Missouri oh yeah duh. Okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah I would say second best first drop I've experienced only behind Iron Gwazi at Bush Gardens Tampa, which now they just got the friend yet, unfortunately, but maybe someday. Yeah. Drop out of the station on time travelers is insane. What's cool about time travelers, you don't know which way you're going to be facing. For example, you can take the drop out of the station backwards or sideways, and then you can literally take the zero zero facing forwards like a front flip through it, and it's just chaos. And it's got two launches. Yep. First one is not that good, but the second one's actually surprisingly decent because it's a rolling launch. And you get an airtime pop right before the you launch, do. which is really cool. The switchback hill is amazing, and there's three elite airtime moments on that ride, which can't be said about most my coasters, I think. The one right before the launch gets you off guard because you're actually speeding up while you're still out of your seat. That's if you're funny. in the back car. That's your yeah. That's if you're in the back. Which uh yeah, that's definitely which is the best the back, experience. Yeah, the best row on the ride is the back row. Seven actually. or eight, it doesn't yeah. really matter. Although I will say I do think I prefer row seven because dropping out of the station forwards like that, it was weird. I think backwards is better. Out of the I station, mean, they're though. not that much different. I think I like row seven a little bit better, maybe because of the cool view got. Because I actually happened to be dropping while facing thunderation, so that was pretty weird. Maybe that added to it, but I didn't really notice too much of a difference besides that. I'm just so glad I picked up that new credit. Yeah, so, it's, yep. it's a really good one. Ride to happiness. Oh gosh. I'm almost wondering if that would be too much for me because time traveler times, it's almost like, okay, I need to sit down and take a break for a while because it was a lot. That's my most anticipated coaster anywhere in the world, I think. Even over Velocicoaster? <laughs> I think so. Dang, I don't know. Mine's a Zadra. Oh yeah, Zadra Energy Yeah, Lania. that's a good one too. Anyway, I can't wait for more mock Extreme Spares to be open, but I'm glad we got one a couple hours away from where we are. Which... King's Island. Oh, imagine if they put one in 
this Oh my gosh, text. could be best part I if know. they put it in there. My favorite park is Holiday World, but that's sentimental value, so I can't really do yeah, it. Yeah, me too. That's a whole nother video. Yeah, yeah. we'll get to that uh, later, yeah, obviously. <laughs> Ryan, go ahead and do number three. Mr. Freeze, Reverse Blast. I think it's the shortest coaster on the list. It could be. No, no. actually it's not. It's not actually as one that is shorter. We'll get to that later. Launch backwards out of the station, it's zero to 70 miles an hour in like 3.5 or four seconds. I think it's 3.8. Good launch. It's not anything real special, but it's a backwards launch, which kind of makes it special. If you are in the back car and look behind you, oh, you're launching out of the station. Do it like that. Oh. I, don't, I don't do that. Yeah, much, but it's I, crazy I if you do that. Do it. Inverted top bat, one of the best elements anywhere. Oh, absolutely. Every time I ride that thing, especially in the back of the train, I always get nervous for it because Ryan and I mentioned this in a previous video. We got a rollback on it in April 2021. And Very wow. back row. So much hang time. Very back row stop perfectly upside down at the top of the inverted top hat for three to four seconds and the hang time was the best mm. we've had on any coaster. On any coaster. Even full throttle. Yep. I've never gotten a rollback on Mr. Freeze before. It's very rare. We yes. got lucky. Very lucky. Not to mention I called it 15 minutes earlier but we were more in depth than that in previous video. Oh but, yeah. yeah. Um, Inverted top hat. You get ejector both sides coming off going in. Then you hit that overbank turn. It's not anything too special when you're going on a trip out. Then you go up the spike. 218 foot tall. Although you... the back of the train doesn't get that high. I would recommend trying the very front on reverse blast freeze if you can because very front and very back I think are equal because the back I would argue is better for the trip out because you go higher up on the spike the return trip I think it's better in the front because everything feels more accentuated up there in terms of forces overbank is wild going in the inverted top out on the return run is insane I'm really impressed with how good freeze is running Ryan are you doing okay in there yeah Okay. Before we move on, I do want to say that I got to experience it in the front when I wrote it for the first time years ago. Oh, that's right. You wrote it forwards. He's the only one who has written it forwards. Yes, I have. Which I have been dying to ride the one at over Texas with the forwards train because that thing is already my top coaster in Texas facing backwards. I can't wait to try it forwards. Yeah, and when you were going up that spike forwards, looking up like that is just pure insanity. Like, oh, I, I think bet. it's way more insanity than when you're looking down as you're going up the spike. Yeah, I don't so. hear that about. I don't you'll, hear too many people say that. You'll see what I'm talking talking about if you ever get that chance. Yeah, which uh, if you want to do that, go to Six Flags Over Texas and ride Mr. Freeze facing forwards. Hopefully they'll do the same thing where they turn one train forwards on St. Louis because that would give me a reason to ride that thing more often, which uh, speaking of it, that has been very close to becoming my new favorite coaster in the park, which I think is insane as of late. The coaster that I do have on top, uh, we'll get into that right now, which else, what is our number two coaster in Missouri? The boss. Yeah, the boss. <laughs> the boss yeah. is a huge CCI at Six Flags St. Louis. Giant, like it's huge. so huge. It opened April 29th. 2000. Yeah, which uh, Ryan and I wrote it when it turned 23 years old, which got the nano. Here's the right nano there. of it. It's pretty huge. big. It's just insane. It's a giant wooden coaster. Yeah, seeing it in person is a whole different story. Oh, it's yeah. Just so fun Massive. fact, when it first opened, it used to have a giant double helix in the end, but then in 2018, they got rid of it. And also increased the mid-course brake run, which Ryan and I have noticed this first hand between 2019 and like last mm -hmm. 2021. It was stopping the train entirely a oh, yeah. decent amount. Yeah, I felt those too. It is still possible to get a trimless ride, which we, all three of us have had that multiple times, which yes. is insane when that happens. It is my favorite ride in the park, so. Yeah, I mean, it's close. It's second it's, for me. Yeah, I, I have it as number one, but like I said, Mr. Freeze is very close to beating it, but I would still take Boss over it for now, but it's a lot closer now now than it was at the start of the year, that's for sure. This ranking for me is only if I'm riding in the front. If I'm riding in the back, it's nowhere near this high. Yeah, I like it in the back a little better, to be honest. It's oh, not as crazy. It's not as bad as Screaming Eagle, in my opinion. Mm, I don't know. Boss in the back, in my opinion, is worse than Eagle in the back. Boss, especially Boss when it's is bad. horrible in the very back row. It's kind of bearable in the second to back, but it's still not great. Yeah, my last time riding the back of Boss was second to back. It was just brutal. Brian and I noticed this issue quite a bit. The ops were stapling like crazy this last year. year. First drop, awesome, because it's double down and my favorite part of the ride is the first two speed hills after the first drop yeah they're really and then good. the double up at the end in the front the second part of the double down the speed hill and the first round and also the double up in the brakes those are like four really good airtime moments especially if you get some room which the ops were stapling us a lot this year which i think we might have already said that. yeah american Thunder was very inconsistent in the past this was really inconsistent yes boss this year was so inconsistent i don't even know why like i did not expect it to be inconsistent it was like fast one day and then the next weekend it was slow as can be roughness was just fluctuating all over the place. I forgot to mention that I think I got a trimless ride on my birthday. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. I think you and I, we might have been some of, if not the only ones on the train when we got a trimless ride on Boss. Yeah, I remember that. We actually got a Zen ride on Eagle earlier that morning. Yeah. And then uh, you and I got Boss. I think we were the only ones on it, although, like I said, I don't remember off the top of my head. You know what would make the Boss a little better? Not an RMC treatment. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, an RMC treatment would make it the best coaster unanimously. No. It's been rumored for years and it still hasn't happened I will 
will yeah. not be happy if that thing is ours. I will be happy. Ellis, will you be happy if it happens? Uh, it just depends. As long as they make it good, yeah. put some good elements in it. Yeah, should yeah, put inversions, put a lot of ejector. It already has ejector. It has time. four. Four moments. In the front. In yeah. the back. I don't even know. Like, barely any. Like, the two speed heels have ejector, and then the double up at the end, and that's it. If it was an RMC, you know how much they would put on that. I don't know if they would oh, make yeah. it out a lot shorter. I think they would make the turnarounds a little shorter. I don't know. To be fair, it does cause some pacing issues in the second half, especially when the mid course is trimming hard. But Yeah, could make it taller. Anyway, our number one in Missouri, Outlaw Run. And this was not even a close fight. No. Because <laughs> keep on, Ryan and I both had this as our number one in Missouri. Oh, yeah. So that's just like all you need to know about it. It's the coaster that made me an enthusiast. Yep. I think Ryan was supposed to introduce us a lot. I think we yeah, kind of got it's, sidetracked. It's okay. Right? It's always been my favorite coaster in Missouri. And it was my number one for a very long time until... Steel Vengeance? Yeah, when Steel Vengeance became my number one. Steel Vengeance is still your favorite. Yes. It's so, favorite. Velocicoaster might have something to say about that. Yeah, this is one of the best roller coasters I've been on. Oh, absolutely. And I agree with you. It's always been good. The yeah. only bad part about the ride is if you sit in the back row and there's a pothole on the first yeah, drop. Yeah, that's why you that's put it. A, if you do the back on that run, I would say row 11 instead of row 12 because they ride identically in terms of forces, but it's a lot smoother than Rollo. Strongest air time in Missouri, oh, I would yeah, say. Duh. By, Actually, by a quite yeah, big Even Mama's return run isn't quite as strong in my no, opinion. No, it's not. RMC killed it with this creation. And it's did. a wooden coaster, and it makes yep. it that much better. And I think as of now, it's... Actually, no, Glad the Great America is a wooden coaster. I forgot about that. Outlaw Run. Wow. Yeah, basically. It's just insane. Shortest coaster in Missouri, I would say, in terms of duration. I think we were talking about which one it was. I forgot Outlaw Run existed. Not in short duration, which is funny because it's number one on the list. Yeah, I know. And it packs in so many good elements into... So it's even shorter like, than Mr. Freeze? Oh, I think it is. Absolutely. Wow. Because, like, wait, you go down 30, the first drop. Something like that. Yeah, seconds. it's like not even 40 seconds from the drop to final breaks. It's just wow. Crazy. And, oh my gosh, the double barrel ending. Do who doesn't yeah. doesn't like that? Who doesn't like that? I mean, I actually got uh, two Zen rides on it back in July this year. Nice. And uh, the double barrel roll, insane hang time. Because I was the only one on the train first thing in the morning. So that's wow. just like, even won a golden ticket award opening year. Oh, yeah, it deserves it. Ride. It's by far the best ride open in 2013. Like, yeah, granted, I, long shot. I haven't even, done Iron Rattler yet. Which, I don't think Iron Rattler will be. I don't know. People hype that up to be one of the, the better RMCs. I mean, it has a good drop. That's what I've heard. And yeah, the and drop like, off the quarry wall. Yeah. That's two elements. All our run has more than two good elements, right? Yeah, there's not a single bad element. No, on there's Alaron. no bad elements on this coaster. Even the first inversion, which throws you out of your seat and then whips you back. Much. I don't recall getting that much every time on it. Like I said, there's not a bad element. All the elements on that ride are just insane. Yeah. As for where I had it ranked, I'm not going to say where it is yet, but I will say my 2020 and 2021 rides on it were really good, but I feel like I didn't rank as high as And after riding it 20 times this year, I'm like, I'm doing this ride a disservice by ranking this thing outside oh, my top 10. Yeah. So I moved it quite a bit up. Now, I'm not going to say where my top 10 it is, but you'll have to wait for the top 50 at the end of the year. Uh -huh. Ellis, what do you think about this ride? You like it? I freaking love it, man. Like the last time I went to Silver Dollar City and rode this thing was back in August of 2017 when I went with my family. And that was prior to this year, by the way. Yes. yes. And obviously, Time Traveler wasn't open yet. I don't think I rode Thunderation at that time either, but mm. I picked up a new kitty coaster there. Oh, that was oh, right. Yeah. Jeez, I forgot we did my that. My first ever roller coaster. That is true. We did ride Grand Exposition Coaster, and uh, I don't know. <laughs> Are we proud of that? I don't know what to say about it, guys. But Outlaw Run is still my favorite ride there. Oh, yeah. yeah I don't so. think any, even if Silver Dollar City gets some crazy giga, I actually don't know if that would beat Outlaw Run. Yeah, Outlaw Run like, it's just so, it's too good. Because uh, I will say, I do have Outlaw Run ranked over Orion and Fury after this year, so. I do too. Yeah. There's only one giga that ranks higher than. Oh, it's I-305, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I will say I do prefer Outlaw Run to I-305, though. I'm going to go more in depth with that later. Yeah. I actually can't wait for the new Fire in the Hole next. Oh, that's oh, right. That is an RMC. Yeah. Ryan, you'll be getting your last ever rise on the original. Yep. later this year. You lucky dog. I will. <laughs> I'm mean, lucky. We all got on it. Uh, Next back year. In July. Yeah, it was normal. That really lasted. That wraps up this video for the top 10 coaches in Missouri. And I know what we're thinking. Where's Wildfire? Where is... Zambezi Zinger. Yeah, Zambezi Zinger. Timberwolf. Like, Timberwolf. That too. Like, some of these rides just weren't quite good enough. And uh, we had to figure out which ones our 10 favorites were, which uh, this was an uh, average list, I guess you could say, in terms of, like, which coaster, we're, rank, and whatnot. Like, we're just glad to live in a state with some really good ones. Yeah, even though, like, we have Six Flags St. Louis, like, what, 30 minutes from us? It's yeah. not this park. No. I mean, Silver Dollar City is better than our park, <coughs> that's for sure. But I will say I do prefer our park to Worlds of Fun, because Worlds of Fun's policies, they're just inconsistent. Nah, I don't, mm -hmm. The operations there are obnoxious. Like, spinning Dragons, what is wrong with the ops on uh, that Okay, thing? now, now yeah, you I got I still me. haven't got on that. <coughs> I mean, to be fair, it is near Cloud of Pandemonium layout-wise. But Pandemonium 
medium operate so much better. Yeah. Spinning dragons makes you wait in a really long line and they only run one train. Like what? A I one, don't like that at One all. four passenger train crazy. at a time. I'm sorry this is turning into a ramp, but what the heck is going on here? They need they to need add to more make trains the, on that thing. No, they have multiple on them. They, just, they need to make the station bigger. I think like they only choose to run they, one Because they, they only have uh, two trains in the station at one time. Pandemonium's got four. Plus that's a moving loading platform. Mm -hmm, and it loads a lot quicker. The yeah. spinning dragons are moving. I don't know. So. It's I not as so. stationary. Oh, okay, okay. But that is uh, our video on our top 10 coasters in Missouri. And uh, feel free to comment what your top 10 coasters in Missouri are. We're intrigued to see what you guys think of it. And also, be sure to let us know what other videos you would want to see any of us do for a coaster discussion. I know Ryan and I were going to be doing a video of our top 50. 50, yeah. Yeah, at the end of the year. And also, we were thinking about doing like a controversial coasters video. Overrated, coaster underrated. Yeah, yeah, and also, if Alex gets out to King's Island, we can maybe do a King's Island coasters rank video. Maybe next time, if we do a discussion before we go to King's Island, we should do a big discussion about Holiday World. That actually could be a good reason for us to do a review of like Good Gravy, for example. Yeah. I mean, I would probably maybe do like a whole separate review of that just myself down the line, obviously. But we could do like a, a group discussion based on what we think about it. But comment below what uh, other coaster discussions you want to see us do. Until then, we'll see you guys later.